Hello, friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Keyboard Pumpkin Podcast. That's right, Profoundish has been completely taken over by just a different podcast entirely, you know, as we do. Also, stay tuned. We are once again inventing a brand new song just for you guys. We enjoyed doing that so much before that we did it again. So stay tuned for music, keyboards, and pumpkins, I guess. Star Wars video game experience is there's a lot they've come out with a lot of games and I've had such precious few of them (laughs) (laughs) there is a ton of games and I still want to give the one a shot of the remember anybody listening Weston YouTube you already know this I am uh, I know virtually nothing I've I've seen a little bit of Star Wars but not really enough to say anything about it but I want to play that game that came out this past year it was nominated for a couple game awards I think the the redheaded guy, the guy that kind of looks like me, that Star Wars game. <laughs> I want to play the one with me in it. That's why I want to play it because he looks like me. But no, I have heard that that's like a pretty decent game though. Um, well, yeah, I what did. The heck was that called? I don't remember. But while you're looking that up, I played my first exposure to Star Wars. Period. Like as a franchise, was actually Super Star Wars on the Super Nintendo. That was a really actually I own that game. I think yeah, I'm looking at it. But um, that was a really fun game, but it was like, I've seen videos about it since, and apparently it's just like, as a lot of games were back then, it was just unfairly difficult, because I don't remember ever getting too far, but... A lot of the early Star Wars games were just like that. I don't remember what the name of it was. I think it it might have been like Jedi Knights or something like that. It was like Star Wars something Knights, Knights... I don't remember what it was. Not not Knights of the Old Republic, but uh, it was like a PlayStation 1 game, and it was brutal at least it was for me as a kid playing the game it was brutal at the time star wars jedi survivor is the one that came out this year jedi survivor that sounds right what was the um that like it was really popular for quite a while that and there's two of them uh battle oh wait no was was that the the original battlefront and the the original original battlefront 2 were goaded the uh, remakes, right. the remake of Battlefront had promise and potential, and then the remake Battlefront Two, I don't know, just just didn't bring it together for me. Yeah, it, it, for, for, okay. So at the time, because I do remember the original Battlefront games, and I know those are like legendary, right? And I played like once again cousin game, never owned them, never was interested, but I like I was familiar. But then I remember when I had roommates at the time who were very hardcore Star Wars fans. Yeah, so. So the interest there when they played, like Star Wars games fans, I should say, they're big fans of Battlefront and all that stuff of the original one. So they were super excited. They bought it day one. I was watching them play it. And I, to my knowledge, the consensus of the first one that was redone was like, you know, after I put so many hours into it, I've learned you know, it's OK. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Like, that was kind of the idea. I don't you know anything about the second one, though. The I the the first one it was like you know it's a new studio making it it's from the battlefield people it's got some things that's going right it's mi- missing some features but it's it's starting to it's got the right feel I like where it's going I'm looking forward to a sequel with more features and a more polish and more of a clearer direction of where they're going uh, and instead they just went with this loot box nightmare disaster that like with these cards that you collected that just objectively made you like more powerful than nude players. And it was just, mm-hmm. it was just hot, uh, hot, and, a hot mess. And I, I was upset because when that game was coming, I, that was one of the few games I pre-ordered the freaking like gold version or whatever it was. I was all oh. into it. I uh, cool. Cause I, I love battlefront, the original battlefront one and two. So I, and I was pretty into the original, the, the remake battlefront one. I'm like, well, there's no way they can screw this up. They're just going to get better. And uh, supremely disappointed there. <laughs> well, that's, I am sorry to hear that, especially like uh, when you have such anticipation. That does always kind of sting a little. But uh, I haven't been that- burned that many times in life when it comes to video games. I haven't been burned that many times. It happens, whatever. It it does happen. That's true. I, I, uh, I think that that was around the time. Because if I were to guess, I, I try to be, uh, I'm usually pretty good with years. I think the game came out, I'm going to guess, in 2015. Um, that's a guess. Look that up and see if I'm right or wrong. It's around that time. But 2017 that was a, for Battlefront 2. 
Well, I was talking about the first one. Okay. But um, but I, which might actually still check out maybe two years apart. I guess we'll see. Anyway, 2015. Um, you're right. Yep. 2015. So wasn't that around the time where re- we really started kind of pushing back on this, like the loot box stuff started to get really kind of in the public consciousness a lot more then. Especially, and we were, yeah, especially in 2017 when Battlefront 2 did it. It was a big hot topic, hot button topic uh, with a uh, Overwatch did it with cosmetics and was uh, wildly successful. And then all of a sudden it was just in every single freaking game. And it, they would, yeah. you know, these games would tie like actual game progression to it. And it was just massive gambling and they wanted real money for it it's like you want to play this game you want to be good at this game you better cough up some cash it's like yeah. what are we doing why like guys just make a freaking game and you'll make money <laughs> don't don't, yeah. don't try to scam me when that's when it's... i started falling out of love with just triple a games period mm-hmm. like i mean i can't trust a big studio to make a game for the game's own sake they're just going to make a game because they hate me and they want my money <laughs> it was really all a wonderful like transitional time because that was also during the same time when you know and and year and a handful of years before as well where you're seeing more and more of these indie developers coming up you know this yeah. generation that grew up playing their favorite games who are now old enough and smart enough to make their own games and now most games that I play with with a few exceptions are usually much smaller not necessarily independent like companies, but very right. the smaller made games, and they're great experiences. Yeah, games that like, aren't trying amazing. to be like a single, um, like what, what what was the the big term like live service or whatever games that are trying like, to be yeah, a yeah. service where you're, like you're gonna play this one game forever and spend yeah. literally all your money on this one game. I don't want to play that game. I don't want you know that. What's funny? I, there was a, like, I felt like there was like a year or two and every game was trying to do that. This was during, like, this is also the same era as, like, Destiny, which, by the way, yeah. I was a fool for for a while. I say that because I did enjoy, like, with Dest- the first Destiny, I didn't play much Destiny right. 2. But I remember I liked the idea. I started to play it. No, this is kind of a separate note, but I remember I was like 30, 40, maybe 50 hours in, and I'm thinking, this is the same thing over and over and over and over again and that gameplay loop just got really old really fast and then i'm thinking i don't know how you want to sustain this for so long very few games can do it you know like but i'm not saying it can't work obviously look at gta 5 that game has been around forever and it's also changed a lot over the years but like online but in general though i just i'm glad it doesn't seem like that's such a huge as big of a deal as it used to be but I mean, there's there's still games that do it, I guess. But it doesn't seem like a focus anymore, at least from what I feel. But, oops, what's going on here? Why can't I? I don't know what's going on here. Sorry, my screen was doing something weird. <laughs> what's going on here? What do you know about Stefano <laughs> Catrupi? I could sense the silence that you were getting ready to pivot. <laughs> I, was just, I was just curious. Um, could you say that name again? Stefano Catrupi. I know Not absolutely that nothing. Day, right. about what if I Stefano told Catrupi. you? What if I told you he's in the Guinness Book of World Records? Oh well, yeah. what for? This is what I'm saying. I, I want you to guess. Oh, uh, uh, longest tongue. No, no. What if it had nothing to do with him, <laughs> but something he grew? Uh, pot? <laughs> um, hair? I'm, I imagine like literally just like a kitchen pot. <laughs> he grows kitchen pots. It's really the, complicated. The man grew a pumpkin larger than a Nissan car. Heavier than 17 <laughs> adult men, weighing in at 2,703 pounds. The world's that, largest pumpkin. Is that true? That's yeah. huge. That's a massive pu- I don't. I don't know how that... I don't know enough about gourds, and I should. Because welcome, everybody, to oh, the no. Keyboard Pumpkin <laughs> podcast. Keyboard Pumpkin? <laughs> yeah, you don't remember this one, do you? I don't. I don't. 
<laughs> the Keyboard Pumpkin Podcast, everybody. We're continuing our series of uh, strange oh. niche podcast concepts that we uh, invented back in episode 19. This was um, yep. your creation. I don't remember what the third word you had to work with was, but it was something, and it was keyboard, and it was pumpkin, and you're like, I don't know, the Keyboard Pumpkin Podcast, and you didn't even know what to do with that information. No wonder I can't remember it now. <laughs> you're like, one... <laughs> This was your idea. You're like, one person's really into gourds, and the other person's into music. <laughs> and they talk about how the two come together. Oh, my God. So we're going to be talking about how music and, and gourds come together. Oh, I, I imagine I can be the gourd guy. You're going to be the music guy. <laughs> so in other words, it's going to be a breeze for me, but you're going to have to do a lot of improv again. That's all that I do. I mean, if yeah, I had to I do mean, music, I'd have to do improv, too. <laughs> right, right. Okay, well, it's a breeze for me this week. That's great. So since you've already you know, been able to process this a little bit um, yeah. here on what's, what's called Keyboard Gourd? No, what's it called? Pumpkin Gourd? I've the Keyboard forgot. Pumpkin Podcast. Keyboard Pumpkin. Yeah. So have we, you like... You know what's funny a- is when we were doing the episode 19, we kept switching up to... We couldn't remember what the heck you'd said. Is that keyboard pumpkin or pumpkin keyboard? What What is this podcast? See, some things just don't have that ring to it, right? So um, have you thought of any correlations before uh, joining me today? No, I'm the, I'm the gourd guy. <laughs> okay. I, so well... Like, the thing is, I know you can make some instruments out of gourds. Like, they make, like, maracas out of gourds. They do. They've... Oh, they've done more than that. They've made, like, actual, like, stringed instruments out of, like... Uh, they took like the like the skin or something. So yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, it was something. I think it was like pumpkin skin, and they made a guitar out of it. Steph and I went to. And if you ever if you ever find yourself in Phoenix, Arizona, this goes to anybody. Go to the Instrument Museum. It has like every instrument basically ever. I'm not kidding. It took us like four hours to get through it, and we still weren't done. And um, any recorded instrument in history that they could get their hands on. They have it in there, and they had these really unique—I can't remember where they were made. Um, it wasn't here in the United States. They're very old, but it was made out of, like, yeah, some sort of, like, gourd skin or pumpkin skin. It was a guitar. It was really cool. So, yeah, I mean, you can take parts of uh, these things and make it into a maraca. Maraca makes a lot of sense, too. I Because I, I know I've definitely seen that before, where, like, some kind of squash was hollowed out into maracas. But I guess, like, yeah, even a weird guitar-type stringed instrument or something, like, yeah, if you cut a massive hole into it and it, it's shaped just right, throw some strings on. You know, guitars and, like, violins and fiddles and all those stringed instruments like that blow my mind, like, that they work at all. Like, you pluck some yeah. string and somehow that that just makes a sound that you wouldn't expect if you had never seen an instrument before. Yeah, and every part of how it's built can affect something else. You know, like depending on how hollow the instrument is or if if there's more kind of woodwork inside, you know, how big the sound hole is, what kind of strings you use. And that actually, um, I was was actually thinking about this right before you said that, was if you take a pumpkin, for example, you want to make music with a pumpkin directly, its, its tone will change the more you clean out or don't or not clean out it's insides if you leave the seeds in there or not. Um, so that's always something fun that you can do. It's kind of it's kind of similar in a way, you know, like if you have like a bottle of like pop or, or like a glass bottle that can be anything, and then yeah. like you slowly drink more out of it, and then you like blow in it, and like it changes the tone because of the amount right. that's in there. Um, it's kind of like that. So like when you completely clear out a pumpkin, it's fun to play like a drum. I've done that from time to time. Like I, I'm thing. imagining too, like. You can just beat on like the shell of the drum. I mean, of the pumpkin, like a drum. Has anyone actually just put like the tarp, the canvasy tarp? I don't. Even, I don't know what you call that part of the drum. Like over a hole in a pumpkin and beat on that. What would that sound oh, like? I don't know. I don't know. I bet you if you stretched it hard enough, yeah, it would definitely give some sort of tone. I don't know. That um, that'd be. It'd probably be if I were to guess a very, very kind of high short tone. But that'd be fun. And then, like, I could see now I'm going in like Alex YouTube mode. I'm thinking, okay, what if I get like 
10 different size pumpkins, right? And do that, like put that tarp kind of thing or whatever is layered on top of that little hole, yeah. you know, and, just, and do different, because that would all have different sounds. That's like um, next October's little musical project for you, like to do, this is the, the Alex Duquette pumpkin medley, but instead of like doing different songs, it's all on different pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 20 pumpkins in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've seen uh, weird uh, TikToks or shorts like that where it'll be just like a few like strange instruments and they just go down the line and make it make a sound. I've actually seen basically that, just not the pumpkin concept. <laughs> you know, I this is kind of a side note, but I want to give myself a pat on the back. It didn't pay off and it didn't work, but it was pretty cool at the time. This was back in when I started my channel. The second video I ever made, and don't bother looking for it because it is now private because it, it's it's not good. <laughs> but um, I made a video, and it was a song, an old song called Losing My Religion, if you're familiar oh, yeah. with that. And I, I don't know why I picked that one. I just liked that song, so I picked it. And I did, like, I filled, I took a, all of my mom's glassware, brought it down to the basement, which is where I was, was that's where my room was at the time. And then I <clears throat> poured different amounts of water in each glass to match a note. Right. So I pretty much had the whole key of, of A minor or whatever the, you know, whatever the notes I needed. And I actually did a cover of that song with that. And I thought like I, I, I rediscovered this kind of recently. It's why that's why I remember it now. <laughs> and obviously nobody I had one comment on it and the comment was like, this is not good. Try again. And oh. I rewatched it and, and it wasn't that it, it, I mean, it was fine. It just wasn't great. But sure. It was pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff, but nobody cared. You're like, I was just Welcome. trying. I was just experimenting. At least give me props for the idea. I definitely wasn't the first because there was a guy on there who did that who probably inspired me because I, I know it's an older video. And he would like, he did the boxes thing and all that. A lot of my early inspirations were that. And he would like pour water into a glass that fell from one screen to another screen. And then like that had a, you know had a different tone now and stuff. It was really highly edited for the time, and that really inspired me. So it's amazing what people can do, but I bet you somebody's done it with pumpkins. There's got to be a pumpkin video on YouTube or someone like Musical Pumpkin or something. I Okay, now I just now I have to look it up. Now I have to go to so, YouTube. I'm going to type in Musical Pumpkin. Yeah, look it up. I'll t say this while you're looking it up. Um, there's a, one of my OG favorite YouTubers who inspired me to get into medleys, Freddie Gretty. He actually just did a song basically like heavily coconut inspired. So like he did a he like recorded a coconut and like used that as the percussion and he used it for like a bunch of different stuff. That was kind of cool. He did that pretty recently actually. So people the first things that come stuff. up are just like peaceful relaxing mu music, happy pumpkin day, like that kind of thing or there's like a oh. pumpkin waltz apparently for an hour. But then I scroll down and I see Billy Eilish bad guy pumpkin cover. <laughs> Oh, With you five click million on that. views three years ago. I'm like, what is this pumpkin cover? Are, wait, I'm, is I'm the, clicking is, on it, and they're knifing okay. out part of the pumpkin now. Okay. They're coring it out. Got some sweet ASMR of the of the spoon in the pumpkin. All right, they're tapping the okay. pumpkin. So far, no Billie Eilish is happening. Okay. So far, I can skip ahead. Should, so ooh, far, they're really sliding that knife in there. I think they're making it into a jack o' lantern. And then gonna play it. I don't know what they're doing. I'm gonna skip ahead. Oh, oh we oh, encourage blowing. you to watch this too, everybody. <laughs> he's blowing into the eye hole. Oh, so he's making it like a wit, like a wood, not a woodwind, I guess, like a pumpkin wind. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, oh, he's turning it into like a giant flute ocarina thing, but it's a massive pumpkin. Oh, he's got a small. That's so awesome. Two pumpkins. He's basically made a small pumpkin into an ocarina. And a bigger pumpkin into, like, basically another massive ocarina. That's basically what I'm looking at. That is cool. The, what It sounds like it deserves the five million. Like, does it sound good? Actually, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I got to check that out. Well, everybody, you, you have Weston's approval. Go check this video out. Yeah, I'm going to put a pause on it so I'm not just listening to that while <laughs> we're trying to <laughs> shoot this. So we just had our question answered. It's certainly doable. It certainly is, and I'm I'm shocked, amazed, appalled, and flabbergasted. Now, can you put all three of those together? 
I don't remember the words are you, I just said, except for flabbergasted. Are you, are you shamaz, shamazergasted? I am shamazergasted. <laughs> um, well, this leads us to another question, though, Weston. Okay. I don't know if it leads us, but, it, but I, I am thinking of another sure. question, okay. which is, are there any songs that we can think of at the top of our heads, without doing any research, that are about, like, gourds or pumpkins? About them? Well, there was that one I just saw earlier, but I, I moved away, like that little pumpkin song. Pump about pumpkins? Because well, like you be. said, we well, said because pumpkin waltz, right? That could have been just like the name of a waltz. It's right. called the pumpkin waltz, right? There's probably a Charlie Brown song to the great pumpkin, right? Probably, surely, uh, maybe. Pin- Pinata, Pinata is gonna know. Pinata, can you like jump forward at like back in time and meet <laughs> us right now and tell us? Jump forward back in time. <laughs> I just realized what I said. Very conflicted directions. <laughs> I love it. That, that's going to be a lyric in my next song now. Let me, you know, let me take you forward back in time. Let um, me take you forward back to when we used to look ahead. And Earl and the like girl. That. It's actually funny that we're singing songs right now. You'll find out why later. <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> there's a second part to this episode <laughs> oh man okay yeah i i mean like there's because once again we talked about this on our halloween episode this this past season <clears throat> how there's very few like scary songs to begin or not scary not scary songs sorry songs about halloween right um because like i think of like and then you think of like spooky scary skeletons but is there Happy plumpy pumpkins, you know. There's nothing like that. <laughs> Rolling down the road, <laughs> just pumpkins rolling down a road. Hey, did you know that our home state of Illinois, yeah, uh, produces more pumpkins than any other state in the country? I did not. Why? <laughs> Why? I Illinois? wondered that too. I don't know. You could look that up. That was an interesting fact that I learned. That I thought, oh. I thought I was supposed to be the gourd guy. (laughs) You're hitting me with the gourd facts. I'm going to have to give you some music facts. My next fact I was about to line up was about Haiti, actually. Oh. In the early 1800s in Haiti, gourds were temporarily the nation's official currency. And it's still present today in that their standard coin is called a gourd. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that either, but now you, now I do, and now we both do. Now everybody knows. So, I guess now I need to, I need to present you with with a music fact. But that's such a, I could go so many angles. I don't know what to say, <laughs> and I don't know what you do and do not know. Um, uh, did you know an A sharp is basically a B flat? It's good job. Not. Just, <laughs> I mean, it, it. I mean, it sounds the same. An A sharp is a B flat. Oh, did I actually get that right without thinking about yeah, it? Yeah, you, you literally got it right. I was going to say, I wait a second, Wes. That 0% right. percent of my brain power. I mean, I used to play music, so like I should know, but I used 0% of my brain power. I just let my mouth run, and I was hoping I got that right. Now, traditionally speaking, do you know usually when you'd want to call it an A-sharp versus a B-flat? Like, what's the determining factor? Uh, usually whatever key that the darn thing's in. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That's right. There are exceptions to that rule, though, which is weird. Okay, I got one. This is kind of a... Um, this is actually a little music theory. It's not even music theory lesson. I mean, it, it's just a very small musical term um, that I'm going to ask you about. And it's actually, I define it in my, it's actually out now, my Donkey Kong Country uh, soundtrack retrospective <laughs> video over at VGM Quest. So I, there's I my plug. I briefly got go very excited. Like, oh, I'm going to go watch that. I'm like, oh, as of recording, this, <laughs> yes. <it's not> out. <laughs> Yep, as of recording, it's not out yet. But um, it is, if you're listening right now, listener. But anyway, so I'll give you this. I'm going to ask you, Weston, do you know what a Lee motif is? Is that that uh, monkey from Madagascar? <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> a you mean the, the motif? The, uh, they're lemurs. The, like, I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. Move it. That song was a phenomenon for a while. It was. By the way. <laughs> I'll never forget that. But a anyway, le motif? A, it sounds French. A le motif. Do you have any guesses? Uh, well, a motif is like... 
well, okay, I'm, I, I, I don't know how to define a motif. Now, now I'm struggling. I was going to try to base it off of my, my the, 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 the thesaurus in my brain, but it's coming well, up blank. I don't know. I'm, I guess a, a topic or a central idea in a song or something? Like the thing, it's, the hinge? I mean, yeah, you're kind of you're kind of there because, you know, a motif, a motif obviously can be used in other things besides music, but it's also used in music. And usually a motif is just like a, a, a sequence of notes um, that's kind of very well defined and distinct in a piece of music. Um, a lay motif is basically a recurring uh, sequence of notes or theme that's based around a particular like idea or place. Like a great example would be. And it's like it, it, it's recurring throughout the musical piece, whether it's just one song or multiple songs. A great example would be like the Darth Vader theme. Every time he is in a shot, right, and there's yeah. music playing, there's some version of his theme. The Imperial da, March. Da, 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 da. Like that's an that's one of the most probably famous examples of a lay motif. So there you go. And you brought that up because Donkey Kong has one. <laughs> Because Donkey Kong <laughs> is Darth Vader confirmed. Oh, snap. I didn't know that. I didn't grow up on Donkey Kong games. So you could say that, and I guess I'd have to believe you. It was better him than Lanky Kong. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> Who? No one likes Lanky <laughs> Kong. Exactly. Uh, I assume he's tall and skinny. No, you've probably seen him before because he's been memed for a while. Um, the He's the orange orangutan. Isn't Donkey Kong seen the orangutan kind of orange Kong? colored? Oh, he's got, kind of brown, I guess. If you type in Lanky Kong, okay, he's an orangutan. Lanky. I only know that there's Donkey Kong. There's like, I don't know, Kid Kong or the little one, whatever he is. Diddy. And then there's the old Grandpa Kong or whatever he is. Cranky. Yep. See, I don't know. <laughs> Lanky, <laughs> Lanky Kong. Okay, I get it. Yeah, he's got an orangutan thing going on. That's, okay, his, that, gotcha. that's his whole thing. All right, where's your next, uh, where's your next gourd fact? You want another gourd fact? Give me your gourd goods. Well, like, a lot of my gourd facts are just kind of, like, not amazing. Like, sh like shell shaking. Let's see here. What do we got here? There's a unique Japanese game involving gourds called Sui Kawari. Yeah, yeah. What do you do in that game? In Japanese tradition, participants are blindfolded, and they use a wooden stick called a boken to try to split a watermelon, which is placed on a covering on the ground. Players have a limited time to complete the challenge, and everyone eats the watermelon afterward. I think the challenge might be like <laughs> busting it open. It's like it's like a Japanese pinata. I just love the idea that, yay, we got it open. Okay, everybody eat. <laughs> yeah, I pretty I just, much. Everybody eat now. Uh, that's funny. Uh, well, what can be compared to that in music, huh? Uh, well, hmm. uh, there's um, that what? song that I can't think of that has a cannon in it, and it explodes, kind of like the watermelon would explode. <laughs> there are explosions in music. There's plenty what of is... sound effects in music. What am I, I don't know what you're talking that, about, uh, that Hang on, I'm typing symphony with a cannon. I, it, we all know what it is. Is it Packle Bell's Cannon in D? I don't think it is. No, Cannon in D is the, like, that Christmas song. 1812 Overture, that one. I think that's overture. the one, right? Yeah. Yeah, 1812 Overture. The 15 minute overture is best known for its climactic volley of cannon fire, ring chimes, brass fa fanfare. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I'm familiar. Uh, that's I'm a, sure that's you are too. Little... Very famous. Um, well, there Needs are. more gourds. Yeah, <laughs> not enough <laughs> gourd action here. There are plenty of songs um, that have lots of non-instrument, non at least non-traditional, you know, things that aren't used as instruments put in songs. And I don't mean like, you know, Foley work or anything like that. I mean like real, just like standard songs. They put all kinds of things in there. I always think about, um, <laughs> this isn't Gord related, but <laughs> I, mean, I think about, remember that all I want to do is boom, 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 take your money? Yeah, the, from by Kesha. Yeah, is that was that Kesha? I, oh, I just Kesha, like the, uh, that. Uh, what the heck was that called? It was about drug money. I loved that song, and I just love it because all I want to do, and then there's like three gunshots or whatever <laughs> in a in cash the, register. Yeah, cash register. Take your money. I loved that. I love when songs have those little. 
you know, in the industry, Weston, we call that ear candy. Oh, is that ear because candy. you uh, you got you've got a sweet tooth for it? <laughs> I got a, I got a sweet drum for it in my ear. Oh, okay. That makes that. I was trying to think of like, okay, drums, sweet drum, candy drum, drum. candy Ear drums. Drum. I'm like, mm. <laughs> you're going the wrong way. <laughs> I was. I was going the other way entirely. <laughs> I'm really trying to think if there's any sort of. I mean, there's a. Okay, hey, hold on, hold on. There's a band, uh, a great band from the '90s called Smashing Pumpkins. That's their hey, name. Hey, actually, there we go. There is. Yeah. Did they ever actually smash any pumpkins? I'm sure they did, right? D- I know I'm very little about. Did smashing pumpkins actually ever <laughs> smash any pumpkins? <laughs> I am curious. Uh, I can't spell pumpkins. There we go. I gotta pumpkins. find out. The first thing Tune that comes up week. is just a Facebook post from a girl named Amy. We're not gonna worry about that. <laughs> what if she There's- holds the secrets? She knows. Uh, well, it starts with I've been obsessed with smashing pumpkins my whole life. Oh, man, who cares? So I don't, I don't think that's, I no don't think cares, she's got Amy. any insight for us. There's a page on Modern Farmer, smashing pumpkins, a cultural history of a Halloween dot dot dot. I don't think that's it either. I don't think smashing pumpkins ever smashed any pumpkins. Well, smashing pumpkins, I think you're still out there touring somewhere. If you are, big fan. First of all, second of all, um, hey. Smash some pumpkins, will you? Well, you know about... Are you familiar with Gallagher? I think that's his name. Like the video game? No, the... (laughs) He's like a comedian. Oh, no, I don't think I... I don't think I am. So, look him up since since you're you're there. I think Gallagher, he was like a comedian known for like... And he like smashed pumpkins. Or he smashed... Like he... He he was a very physical... I, I don't know, I never watched him. But like he would like smash things, and it was mainly food oh. related. And I, I've seen this guy like memed or like parodied and stuff before. Like there's a yeah, w- uh, Gallagher smashing watermelon is the first thing that came. Watermelon, up. okay. Here's watermelon. Yeah, but imagine that just being your shtick. I'm gonna show up on stage <laughs> and smash a watermelon, and people are gonna lose their goddamn minds. I mean, if it works, it works. Yeah, that is. Imagine the cleanup though. I would hate. I would hate to be. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like the, the 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 custodian crew, you know, the cleaning crew at, at, at like a like a big venue, and going, okay, guys, we got a big event tonight. Gallagher's coming. Like, oh god, oh god, because they know what's guy. coming. They're gonna clean that crap up. Man, you know, he was just a he was just ahead of his time. Early day, uh, how to basic. That's what he was. He shows how up, makes basic. an absolute mess, and then how makes to it basic. someone else's problem. Was oh my gosh, how to basic? What a time to be alive on YouTube! I loved how to basic. I I remember I used to look <laughs> forward to every video, <laughs> and they're all basically the same thing, but it didn't matter. Ugh. Well, Alex, did you know not every <laughs> pumpkin was made for uh, eating? <laughs> oh yeah. Yep, humans have cultivated and hybridized many different kinds of pumpkins. The ones used for carving are usually the larger types, like Connecticut, Connecticut Field and Howden. The ones that are smaller and used for baking are often known as sugar pumpkins, including the New England Pie Pumpkin and Baby Pam. Oh. The little white pumpkins, those are Baby Boo and Casper that are also are very cute. popular. Now you know. Huh. That's my yeah, other know. <laughs> gore fact. I- well, I'm glad you shared that. I I didn't know any of those uh like the specific names. Uh, to me they were just oh, there's a big pumpkin and there's a little pumpkin. <laughs> you know? Right, and there's the a flat same. pumpkin. <laughs> well, it's these oddly shaped, all different kind of shape and color, just pumpkin pumpkin. No, there's pumpkin. different kinds. They got names and I, stuff. I do love the and maybe you named it and I already forgot, but like the, the flatter ones. It looks like you someone just sat on it and it flattened out. <laughs> I love those. Those are some sitting pumpkins right there. <laughs> All right, Alex. The namer, I, the namer got I a little less creative. He did. We uh, have an ad break for... Um, we got an ad break, and then we're going to come back, and I'll tell you what. We have failed on a promise, and I'll explain that on the other side. We're so sorry. 
<laughs> hey guys, exciting news. We have just launched our Patreon. So what does that mean for you? Well, for only a dollar a month, you'll get exclusive behind the scenes content from Weston and I, bonus bite-sized podcast episodes where you'll get the full unplugged and unedited Alex and Weston experience. And lastly, an exclusive Q&A where you'll have the freedom to ask your burning questions and we will answer them on the podcast. All for just $1 a month. So if you want to support the show and get these extra goodies, head on over to patreon.com forward slash profoundish. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, we're already back. We're back. We're back. Yeah, that's right. We failed a promise. We said that we would have a profoundish Christmas album out. <laughs> we failed to we deliver on things. that. <laughs> we say a lot of things. <laughs> we failed to deliver. But uh. while we may not have a Christmas album out, we can continue to progress the profoundish musical uh, repertoire. And mm-hmm. for the second half of this episode, we are going to do something we've done once before. That you oh, asked yes. me to give you a heads up on if I did it again, and then I didn't do that. We're going to oh, improv no. <laughs> a song live right now, but it's got to be about gourds somehow. Okay. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm still excited about it. That's what, All <laughs> for right. For those of you that missed it, we had an improv episode a while back where... Um, we had to improv um, a poem, and we improv a song, and that's where uh, me, Earl, and the girl came to fruition. That's where that came yeah, that's from. That's really good. That was a good song. We're, we're going to definitely produce that eventually, for real, definitely, for sure. Alex is on no, it. Legit. Legit. <laughs> at least we'll uh, make a shirt about it. At least the shirt. And I feel yeah. like it's time to add a second song to the Profoundish lineup, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to share my screen so you can see the uh oh yeah my the the song as we progress uh there we go i always forget how to do this this better not just be like me bill and the pumpkin me bill and the pumpkin <laughs> actually we're onto something we might right, be let me move, so the way this the works over. is that because it's improv we're going to take turns going back and forth i'll start with a word then Alex will do a word, then I'll do a word. So we go back and forth contributing a word to the song. And then when we're ready to move on to the next line, we'll agree on whether or not we're ready to move yeah. on to the next line until we have, by the end of this uh, podcast episode, a, f- a completely, fully, definitely fleshed out <laughs> song ready for production. <laughs> Oh, this is such a fun exercise. I love this. Wes, and I'm so glad that we're friends because there's <laughs> <laughs> this this becomes so much bigger to me because I love crap like this. I'm I'm uh, glad. I'm I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm speechless, but don't be speechless because we got we gotta talk make a song that somehow revolves around like gourds or pumpkins or something. Gourds Can or we... pumpkins somehow. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess we so, shouldn't say anything. We should just go into it, right? Well, we we can. Do we want to do a little bit of planning ahead and then jump okay. in? Do we want to do, like, are we going to have a chorus we're going to come back to? And then how many stanzas should we have or verses or I whatever? Think, I think we should stick to what we did before. Keep it simple. Just kind of an A, B, A, B. So verse, chorus, verse, chorus. I think it's fine. Okay, okay. Um, now, I was feeling this, and I don't know why, but maybe... Especially since it's improv, it could be really funny. You know, sometimes songs start with the hook. It starts with the chorus. I feel like this okay. song needs it. So maybe do like a, it's, it's chorus, verse. So it's chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Basically, it just starts, the, there's an extra chorus at the beginning. Okay, we could do that. So, do we, just, we could even go chorus, verse, verse, chorus, verse, verse, chorus. Ooh. Let's just see how we feel. <laughs> we'll see sure. how we feel. I do Let's, like... I like the idea of of a you know because when a chorus when the, when the song starts the chorus it just it you get pumped right away you know like you know what you're in for okay. you're here now let's see where this develops right instead of it I developing it. up you so let's do it okay I love now, it I love it that does mean the chorus is very important and we're gonna be nailing right. that down right away 
that's that's why I kind of wanted to do it because I really want to see what happens. <laughs> um, are we able? To, are we allowed to talk a little bit about kind of where what direction we want to go, or is that? I guess it kind of takes away. We can talk a little bit, but like not a lot of bit. You know okay. what I mean? That way, it's let, let, still very impromptu, improv, impromptu, whatever. Let's start here. I'm going to ask you, and I'll I'll, I'll let you kind of steer this boat a little bit. Do you okay. want this to be a love song or not a love song? That's a great oh, place know. to start, I think, when writing a song. Oh, no. When we started Me, Earl, and the Girl, we, we didn't know where that was going until it was there. And that it was just a, a heart-wrenching love song. <laughs> <laughs> About a love triangle. <laughs> right. Um, I This could be a love song. I mean, especially if we end up making a, the whole album as love songs. <laughs> it's true it could be this love song from, from profoundish yeah i want to know if the pumpkin um, or the gourd or whatever t- ends up being an allegory somehow i know i i was thinking about that too <laughs> how are we going to use the pumpkin i think let's can we agree on maybe well gourd could be used maybe as a rhyme or something if we're going to rhyme so never mind I say, let's focus on just pumpkin specifically but i don't want to like keep gourd away that yeah could be gourd a good can word definitely come back that is definitely a good word to um, use in fact i'm going to kick us off Okay, yeah, let's just and get it rolling and see off, what happens. Yeah, I'm going to kick us off boldly, where no other b- gourd has gone before, with the first word just literally being pumpkin. Okay. First word. Ooh. <sighs> okay. Right away. I hope you can actually see the screen okay. Can you zoom in a little bit? Uh, I don't know. Like, make your text bigger or something? If I do this, does that zoom yes, in? Yes, that's, that's perfect. Okay, cool. If that's if that's okay for you. Okay. Yeah, that, um, that's fine. I just didn't know if that would actually work or not. <laughs> so I <laughs> here's what I'm feeling. But I kind of want to explain it, but I don't know if I'm allowed to. But I want you to put the word me. M E. Pumpkin me. <laughs> I kinda wanted to comma. Pumpkin you. <laughs> comma, no, 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 yes, we. yes, do it. That's what that's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> It's okay. So my, my word will be pumpkin again. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say you. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Pumpkin <laughs> me, pumpkin you. I think that's the first line. This is the chorus. You think the end should stop right there? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. We'll go to the next then. Since you okay. had the, the you, you got to decide. That's it. Yeah. All right, all right. So now I got to <laughs> think, of, okay, where is this go? Okay, where is this going? Eventually it's got to, it doesn't have to rhyme with you yet, but it's got to end with something that will be rhymable eventually. Right. Okay. Um, pumpkin me, pumpkin you. Um, mm. um. <laughs> I think I have an idea where I want it to go, so I'm curious what. Uh, uh, gourds. <laughs> <laughs> me no i'm just kidding i was um, like don't you dare <laughs> you're right okay pumpkin me pumpkin you um, gourds okay brought b-r-o-u-g-h-t brought us together okay is that uh, a line there or do we keep it going before we go that's to your word line? you can decide Because I'm trying to think of the rhythm, right? So it's yeah. going to be like pumpkin me, pumpkin you, gourds, gourds brought us together. Yeah. Something, 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 ooh. Something, 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 that better. <laughs> so yeah, you know we what? We also don't want the line the line to get too long in the tooth. But yeah, let's let's move let's move to the next line. Okay, next line. <laughs> this is great <laughs> already. But. <laughs> Oh no! You got to add a butt, don't you? I do. A butt, a big old butt. <clears throat> so pumpkin me, pumpkin you. Gorge brought us together. So what I what I'm envisioning this is uh, the song writer in me is coming out, but I'm thinking, okay, Gorge what or what? I don't want to say it. I want to keep it secret. This is see where we sync yeah. up. So never mind. Let's That's do. Okay. I get so excited, Weston. I love writing music. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly where I want to go right after the but. Honestly, I don't either. (laughs) But I'm gonna. You know what? I'm just gonna say. I'm gonna say the word love. 
but love oh but love um ooh, okay but love those are two pretty short words which is good because we leaves us some space for this line that yeah. eventually has to end in an ooh sound of some kind Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> this is so awesome <laughs> I'm trying to think of what rhymes with you and how we're going to get there. Right. Uh, hmm. Well, but also this is a, a but. So this is a but. Okay, so I'm thinking this, there has to be a twist of some kind. So I want to say wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you're right. Okay. Um. Uh, I I, I want to say the word always. Always. Mmm, that leaves me up with okay. That, that okay. Because <laughs> I, I I had a, an idea, but now I've got a different idea. Because I was I was okay. trying to work towards like love wasn't always like the glue, but now but love wasn't oh. always true. <laughs> this makes it deeper. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm this is true really good. <laughs> and end the line. <laughs> okay. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you. Gorge brought us together. Or I'm, I'm okay. And uh-huh, but love uh-huh. wasn't always true. Where are we going to go from here? I don't know. You get to start the line this time. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you. Gorge brought us together. But love wasn't always true. Something, 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 redder. <laughs> That's what I'll do. I'll go, redder, redder, redder. Um, <clears throat> okay. But love wasn't always true. See, there's a lot to say in this line. There is um, so much to say in this line. This is such an important line. Also, is the chorus going to be four lines or more? I was thinking we would just do four. That's that, fair. That was my thought. So that, um, that makes this a very... This is a very important line. <laughs> Almost as if it's like the hook, like the title of the song. It's the I mean, line that, that it, like at the beginning, we don't know what it means yet. But by the end, we'll have to be like, oh, my God, that's what it meant. That's what. It- <laughs> 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 oh, my God, that's what it meant. So but love wasn't always true. I'm kind of I almost want to take a cop out answer. Um, yeah. I'm going to say now. Sorry, I had I had to do now. the cop out. I just I'm not sure. Hmm. Mm. Now it's as in it is. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay. 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 Um. Well, hold on. Now it's but love wasn't always true. I gotta think about what rhymes with together. Weather. Feather. Oh, dang it! <laughs> together, forever. It pretty, pretty just, much anything I, with er. Okay. Um, together. I kind of want to say. I mean, hmm, it's either going to be the word just. Hold on, don't, don't, don't. I, I said it out loud, but it's either just or us. Mm. Now it's us or now it's just. But we also have only so much space in this line. Um. Or even, <laughs> even, oh, yeah. I don't want to give you ideas because I don't want you, I don't want to direct you, but like. I, I know, right? I, I, I think that too, what you're doing. Your, the way I think about it, right? Like, so something brought us together, but the love wasn't always true. So the, the, it's got to be something that, like, brings them apart in a way. But is this, is this a heartbreak song? I think it's a heartbreak oh, song. Oh, <laughs> so, okay, I, I'm going a different direction. We should, we should talk about this. Maybe. I figured okay, we, okay. we'd dig into that in the verses. So basically, right. our little Correct. line that... A, so I think we should end this chorus kind of with, like, on, on that positive note again. Basically, it's another way of saying pumpkin me, pumpkin you, gorge brought us together. It's just another way of saying we're together. Love wasn't always true. It was that little bit of kind of that that cynicism in there. But now it's 
it's it's it's it's us, right? Um, so that's how I'm at least viewing it. And then we can kind of get into what happened in the verses. It wasn't always true, but now it's pumpkin me, pumpkin you. I, I feel like we definitely um, need that verse that explains how how the gourds brought us together, and then <laughs> yeah, yeah, then we can do a verse of how it how love wasn't always true. That's yeah, perfect. about like how it fell apart. <laughs> Right, but at the end of the day, it's still pumpkin me, pumpkin you. Um, okay. I'm just going to say, um, or maybe I should change it. Okay. I just, I'm trying to think of a good rhyme that we can lead to. I guess I'm going to change the word I'm going to say, and good luck, Wes, I'm going to say time. Now it's time. Oh, see, I I am so like this is heading towards a heartbreak. <laughs> Cause now you're like, but love wasn't always true. Now it's time. <laughs> no, I did, no, you don't have to do it that way. Please, no. no it's I mean, you time could, to say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Classic. Oh God. Um, I see where you see that though. Love wasn't always true, and now it's time to like to say goodbye or whatever. But it could also be like uh, a, you know now it's time. For us to celebrate whatever, right? Pumpkin me. Okay, if we're, if we're trying to turn this around. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but love wasn't always true. Now it's time. Okay. I think I think I know where I'm heading to. I'm gonna, so I'm going to say the word to. Now it's time mm. to. See, I don't know what you're thinking. Um, feather, because I think feather, I think like two birds of a feather. That's an old saying. I think weather. That's about all I've got. Nether. <laughs> um, the nether regions. The nether, that's right. <laughs> um, now it's time to all right weston i kind of want to give you more of an interesting word to play with though i was gonna so you can maybe have more creativity with that now it's time to i don't know uh, man what a weird chorus we've invented for ourselves i know now it's time to uh, ah I feel like there's so much fate, like so much fate, like the, all, like the fate of the song is in my hands. That's what I was trying to say. It's a uh, man. We're trying <laughs> now. Okay. So, but let me, let me go through it again really fast. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you gorge brought us together, but love wasn't always true. Now it's time to, well, actually, you know, I don't understand why you, you want it to, or you feel it going one way. Um, now it's time. What? Oh God! I kind of almost have. I feel like I feel like I know the ending word for you here, and if, that would okay. end the line, and it would be such. I feel like the ending line could be the ending word could be right here, and I feel like it would be so like you would actually it would be uh, ambiguous if it's good or bad. Ooh, see that's kind of what I like because right now what I have in my head that I could say would make it basically guaranteed almost the the heartbreak route. Right. But I like the idea of it being kind of ambiguous, um, unless you're fine with going the heartbreak route. Because I, I would, the I know the word I would say. I mean, it, have at it. This is your word. This is your you know word, what? baby. <laughs> okay, let's see what you do with it. Remember. Oh, okay. Now, are you just so, I mean? saying that that's the end of the line? Oh. Actually, no, I did not mean for it to be, be kind of like a loose rhyme with together. I did not mean for that. Because it but could I mean, be. That could kind of work, though. <laughs> pumpkin me, pumpkin you, gourds brought us together. But love wasn't always true. And now it's time to remember. Well, actually, that's well, that's good because it can tell the story. Yeah, it We're could. Like, that could be the line end. And now it's time to remember. And it's perfect because it's, it's the course that starts with it. Right, because it's um, not the strongest maybe, rhyme, but it's it's there. But I bet you, with a good hook, like kind of hooky melody, well, we we could we could sell it. 
I like it. And then here's what we should do, just a little, at the, at the final chorus, we should change the last line because we're no longer remembering. We told the story. Okay, we could do that. We could do that. So, all right. <laughs> well, if you're ending the line there, then we go to verse one, baby. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, it's me here, so I'm going to start with, we need to set the scene. It. Yeah. Was. <laughs> A. Um, uh, uh, what, what, what's a good word? Um, uh, d- 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 <laughs> dreamy. Afternoon. Um, That's good. And should I end the line there, though? Dreamy afternoon. Sure, I'll end the line there. Yeah. It was a dreamy okay. afternoon. You. Uh, were. Sitting across <laughs> the room and line <laughs> and line. <laughs> oh, it's just flowing now. It was a dreamy afternoon and you were sitting across the room. This is so a chorus. We... The stakes are a little lower. <laughs> right. That's true. OK, so we need to we need to remember to call back, though, right to the chorus yep. in general. So yep. this is kind of our goal. Right, it's a dreamy afternoon, so we're kind of painting a good picture, right? Gourds to bring us together, so we need to incorporate some sort of gourds here um, to represent that, I guess. But am I up or are you up? You're up. Okay. Um, I think now we need to say what the 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 writer is doing. So, I, um. Uh, I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I we gotta somehow gourds have to bring us together. Uh, right. Yep. I was. <clears throat> okay, it was a dreamy afternoon. You were sitting across the room. I was <laughs> holding <laughs> a. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. Large. <laughs> no, change it to big. Big would would flow better. A big. I was holding a big. <laughs> I. You know what? I'm kind of. I'm kind of tempted to like, swing this unex in an unexpected direction. Okay. Spoon. And line. <laughs> okay, okay. I know where where this could be going. Uh huh. Completely. We're we're on the same page. How do we sell this in a line? Um, it, right. it, we have to hint at it, right? Okay, I got you. I got you. So let me do. So it was a dreamy afternoon, and you were sitting across the room. I was holding a big spoon. <laughs> <laughs> this is so great. Oh, this is one of my favorite I, segments that we do. I know what line I would write, but I'm not in control of the whole line, so I can only was, imagine. Sitting across the room, I was holding a big spoon. I don't know what I want to end like with the room line, because I'm just trying to think ahead, just in case. But basically, I know I want either either the teller or the, the writer needs the pumpkin. Like, how are they? How are we going to get? Hmm. Oh, well, I've got okay, a spoon. What does she have? Right. Or what am I going to oh, do you, with oh, the I'm spoon? Sorry. You're you right, know? I thought she had the spoon. You have the no. spoon. I have the spoon. I was looking at that wrong. Um, I was hol- I was holding a big spoon. Let me do. Hmm. <sighs> I don't know where we're going to go with this, but I'm just going to say it. Next. No, no, no. I'm going to make it a little simpler. There. Um, there? Like T-H-E-R-E? Yeah. I was holding a big spoon. 
there. Oh, I don't know what to do with there. I don't know what to do oh, with no. there. <laughs> That's uh, so far from where I was going in my brain. Um, I've got an idea. It's probably simpler than your, what your idea was, if I were to guess. A little more. Oh, I don't, oh Lord knows. knows. There. 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 Okay, well, you heard the other one. Did you have a little spark when I had next there? Instead? No. That okay. was, like, somehow worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because is this going to be just four lines as well or longer? Oh. You know, that's a good point. Because right now, I don't... Well, I wanted this to be four lines. Right? That, I basically wanted to that's say... That's what I assumed, but like I figured yeah. we could confirm. It was a dreamy afternoon there... sitting across the room, holding a big spoon, and then we need to introduce a gourd. And we can leave it vague, that first... Uh... I'll just... I, I don't know where to go with this. I don't know where you're going with this. I'm just gonna cop out with was. <laughs> okay. Um... Maybe I shouldn't have said there. Let's do. We're, we're just we're just setting up the scene. I'm gonna say a. A. Uh. Ah. Ah. I'm just groaning over here. Don't mind me. Um, no worries. Should we bring up pumpkin again? There was a pumpkin. That's kind of where I, I was going. There was a pumpkin. I'll go pumpkin. There was a pumpkin. <laughs> pumpkin. Yeah, you, you know. I am the you pumpkin. Should, you should see what it looks like when I'm actually trying to type things. It's a it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It was a dreamy afternoon. You were sitting across the room. I was holding a big spoon, and there was a pumpkin. So what rhymes with broom? We got. Doom, which I don't want to say. We got Loom. We got uh, Groom. The one, that, the one that I was working towards was Bloom. Okay. Wait. We could still work to Bloom. Hold on. Um. I don't know if you're going to know where to go, though, but I know exactly where I would go if you wanted to put okay. Bloom, because I do like Bloom. Um, so we're going to get a little kind of poetic with this line here. So I'm going to... That's what let's I'm see all about, get, is po let's, poetry. Let's see if we get there, Weston. There was a pumpkin. I'm going to say the word waiting. This line will go a little Two. Long. Okay. Um, <laughs> well... Oh, I you I I had I thought that right before you said that the line was gonna go a little long. So I was, I was just like, well, I could get there now. We could get there right now if you wanted to. So so I'm so I'm feeling. Here's what I'm kind of feeling. I don't want to say it. You know, I, you know, I'm just gonna say it. I, I don't care because I was thinking something along the lines of I, there was a pumpkin waiting to see our love bloom or something like that, right? Oh, see, I wasn't gonna get as wordy. I was just gonna let that be like, because my original idea for the line for the whole line was something like, she was holding a pumpkin in bloom, right? Because the okay. pumpkin, like I've got the spoon, she's holding a pumpkin. Pumpkins don't like bloom like that, or right, right. So what's actually blooming is this like they notice each That's other cute. from across the room. So it's like we're we're insinuating that it's not about the spoon and pumpkin, right? Right. Right. Um, okay, put Bloom there. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We don't have to be, like we don't have to spell it out too much. Like, I think, uh, I think people can kind of figure it out. <laughs> I like it. All right, so I would copy and paste the chorus. Um, yeah. I think we should keep that the same. Yeah, there is, yeah. It, it's, it stays a little ambiguous, which I like. Um, okay, so Pumpkin Me, Pumpkin You, Gourds Brought Us Together. Now, love wasn't always true, and now it's time to remember. It was a dreamy afternoon, and you were sitting across the room. I was holding a big spoon, and there was a pumpkin waiting to bloom. <laughs> pumpkin me, pumpkin you. 
<laughs> this is fantastic. Okay, so now we need to, in four lines, what we need to explain is why love wasn't always true. Autumn. Oh, crap. All right. <laughs> um, came. Um, Actually, this is this is... Even if you go literal now, I love this. The pumpkin's waiting to bloom, right? Like, it's like this is a little bit farther back. Now autumn came. So you yeah, could go either way. Autumn came um, in. Okay, I wasn't expecting that one. I know where I want to go. I just don't know what you're going to pick up on. I'm thinking about saying the word like. Came in like blank. Or came in, hold on. Autumn came in. Uh, uh, autumn came yeah. in. Yeah. Autumn came in. I'm about autumn. to say the word like, whether you like autumn. it or not. Autumn came in. You know what? Yeah, I think I'm going to put like. A. Autumn came in like a. So what should we say? Okay. Autumn came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Done. Um, ooh. Parade. That is absolutely the opposite direction of where <laughs> I was going to go. Could not be further from the word I had in my brain. <laughs> I went from... Stampede to parade, and I just like the craziness of parade better. Like, so I'm I'm sticking with parade. Are you ending the line there or no? What do you want me to do? That's up to you. Give me it's your it's oh, your oh, word. Because I I I I was going so a different direction, and I'll tell you what it was if you you know end it or not end it. But you know what, I'm going to not end it. Okay, okay, okay. I came in like a parade of. Mm, okay. Um, we need something because love wasn't always true. I, I want this to be a not good thing. Autumn came, Correct. Aut- Autumn came Which in like a parade. Which is why I can't imagine why you thought of a fun fair parade. So we need no, to somehow parade make like, the, Well, if we can make like the parade a, ironic. Right. right, that's exactly what I was trying to say. Like, like a parade, like the, the craziness of a parade, you know. Like it's, um, let's see, like the parade. black parade. When I was a young, a young man, I love that. My song. father took me into the city. Very few songs can, like, can just you immediately know it just when you hear that first note on a piano. And there's a million yeah. songs that have just a G. Ding. But that one you just know. It's great. All right. Um, Autumn came in like a parade of. What do I want to say here? I know what I want to say, but what word do I actually use? Do you want me to Um, tell you what I wanted to use instead of parade? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm all ears. Knife. Ooh, I like that. (laughs) Well, you know what we could do? Um, this could actually this is a flare of both of us. Let's do a parade of knives. That's what I was <laughs> kind of wondering. That's kind of that's yeah, I like it. Knife insinuates that there was a betrayal. Oh, yeah. Right. And and you can use a knife to carve a pumpkin. And you can use a knife to carve a pumpkin. Oh my god, it's Look so at this. This good. is amazing. <laughs> All right, now how do I start this next line? Um, 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 Autumn came uh, in like a parade of knives. I actually like that line. <laughs> I know what I want my first word to be, but there's 0% chance you're going to go to the second word that I want it to be, so I'm going to make my second word the first word, and I want to just say spilled. Mm, so that makes me want to continue that last thing. Thought, of course. Auto came in like a parade of knives. Spilled. Across. Uh, 
Oh, God. Okay, I know how I want to write this, but it would lead you so the wrong direction. Okay, how about uh, spilled across... Um, pumpkin me, pumpkin you. <laughs> <laughs> Such a stupid song. Okay, spilled across... I, I'm just going to say the... I have a couple ideas for directions, but we'll see what what you want to what you want to pick well, up this on is, here. This is just a sound right now. It sounds like it's just, just con- yeah, a continuation of how we're describing yeah. how autumn came in, right? Um, so the, like, autumn came. I think autumn is the time of the betrayal. So like, right? This is the this is the really artsy. Like autumn came, and boy howdy, did it did it mess things up? Right, right. Autumn came in, and we do need to emphasize that. That's true. Autumn came in like a parade of knives, uh, spilled across the... Man, see, I wish you would have had a different word there. Um, ah, that's so just... hard when you're not in control of the whole darn thing. It's so hard. Sp- spilled across the... What's a better word than... like? I don't want to say there's room. I want to like spilled across the... If it's things in a room, floor, table, counter. The floor. I also want to think about if we want to continue bed. this line, which which, which we could. Ooh, bed may not be a bad one. Turlet. Shower. <laughs> garage. <laughs> cat. Spilled across the cat. There's just knives all <laughs> over a cat. Not in the cat, just on the cat. Um, Covers. I want to... Honestly, I kind of like... Actually, no. I'm going to say, because I'm curious just where you're going to go. I'm just going to throw you a curveball. Dark. Spilled across the dark. This could. This uh, is really going to get kind of artsy. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> my avant guard. Spilled across the dark. Well, I know what I want to say, but it's just putting the ball back in your court, so it doesn't really. Like, I, I want to say of because then there's like several words I want to follow it up with. I, I feel like I'm the one that keeps putting like the little words in, like the ofs and wases, and you're the one that's stuck with like the big words. Right now, it is, yeah. Uh, spilled across the dark. Uh. Well. well. Oh. Uh, across the dark horizon horizon horizons dark horizon is that where you want to end it uh, no uh no no spilled across the dark horizon still going oh god okay spilled across so autumn came in like a parade of knives spilled across the dark horizon i don't even know um I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna do a small word. I'll see where you. I'm gonna say of. Or wait, mm. spilled across the dark horizon. This might be a long line, but I'm gonna say over. Over. Spilled across the dark horizon. Over. So dumb. I know, I know. Oh God. <sighs> what did you I so wanted you to say we Spilled across the dark horizon we. I know. I was, then I'd end it with then I would end the line with sewed. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I see. I would never I see, have thought keep... of the word we there. I know. Well, yeah, I come up with these like lines, but like they require so much setup. <laughs> right. Spilled across the dark horizon over. I feel, I feel like I feel like the line's getting long, so I feel like it needs to be the final word. But I don't know what the final word should be here. Without like us, it could be like. Dark, you, I, the, I'm willing like, to change it back to my last word of. Would that make that last word easier? You think? We kind of say something artsy there, like the horizon of blank. Um, no, I think you confirmed over. I think we're stuck here. I think this is what okay. we have to do. Okay. That okay. is the nature of the game. 
the that nature of the beast um over well i could uh well i could still i, I could still kind of get there i'm gonna say fields because and then i want to end it and then the third line needs to like go into that okay um and what i already forgot what did you say originally oh oh, spilled spilled across the dark horizon we sowed right so what do you want to get into here exactly now like actually like them now I mean, it can go anywhere. I was just like, this mm. is the twist, right? This is the like, oh, this is the part that wasn't true. But like, if somehow it comes around. No, we bring. So I guess we do need to. So we're bringing this around in these last two lines, right? We do. Okay, I was just making sure that you were kind of sitting there. I too. think we so need a line that is like the thing that tested the relationship. But if you want it to be positive, it's overcome. If we want it to be heartbreak, then it's shattered. If we want it ambiguous, then we'll leave it ambiguous. I'd like, I kind of would like the, for them to overcome it. Okay. Personally. So I guess this next line, yeah, let's make it the test. And then the next line is that we overcame. Um. Uh, <laughs> okay, autumn came in like a parade of knives spilled across the dark horizon over f- the dark horizon over fields. Um I think it needs to be like a I'm going to keep it simple and see where you take it. I'm going to put uh Ooh, or should I say you or I? Maybe it should be you or I again. Get right into it. No more playing around. I'm going to say, uh... Okay, let's see. I'm going to say I. I dropped. (laughs) (laughs) Our, A-O-U-R. Oh, you are? Mm-hmm. Our squash. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like what? <laughs> I mean, I was hoping you'd say something like that. I just don't know where we should go now. Um, let's see. I dropped our squash. Uh, so what rhymes with knives? Oh, okay. I know what I want to do, but we'll see. We'll see. I know. I, I like the idea of like lives, like it changed our lives or something. Um, I'm just going to say and. And. Uh, and yet. Oh. Uh, hmm. I have like I one dropped... word that I want you to say. That's it. <laughs> uh, I dropped our squash and yet it. I dropped our squash and yet. I'm probably not going to say the word you want to say, so I'm going to stop thinking about that. I'm just going to say. Uh, so, so <laughs> badly what you just say it. <laughs> so badly. I love how you still say it. I'll say it. You want to say it? Yeah, I'll say it. You don't have. You don't have to. No, I, I did say it. I, I I think we're still playing the game because I did s- survive. Oh, nice, perfect. I dropped a squash, think about that and word. yet it survives. This is good. Final line. Um. Now it survives. Or sorry, yet it and yet it survives. Okay, so on the came in like a parade of knives spilled across the dark horizon over fields. I dropped our squash, and yet it survives. We. Uh. Uh. Mm, I'm going to say... 
reaped. Hmm. Because, you know, pumpkins. <laughs> well, naturally, yeah. You know. Uh, autumn came in like a parade of knives. Spilled across the dark horizon over fields. <laughs> I mean, I guess I wasn't expecting you to say reaped. Um, I know, that's reaped. really out of left field. I'm just going to... This might be kind of a longer line, but I'm going to say we reaped and. We reaped and. Well, now I kind of want to say sowed. We reaped and we sowed. We reaped and sowed. I'm going to say and again. (laughs) And brought. Okay, so when you start thinking about okay, we reaped and sowed. It's and brought, coming together. It, you know, we're bringing well, it all right. back together, right? Right. Um, so we're armed with fields. We got shields. We got yields. I like yields. Um, that's about all I have for rhymes. Let's see. We 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 reaped and sowed and brought. Do you have any other rhymes for fields that you can think of? Yields, shields, wields. Wields. Um, those are the only um, rhyme rhymes I can think of. And yields would work for like the farming kind of side of it again. Yeah. Um, I, I want to... I, oh, I guess we I, reaped and sowed and brought pumpkins as shields. <laughs> <laughs> Here's, I could say the word pumpkins. You could. Hmm. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you, man. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you. We reaped and sowed and brought. You know, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say pumpkins. Just pumpkin or pumpkins? Hmm. It could just be pumpkin. I'm okay with that. Pumpkin. I like pumpkins. And then I'm going to say as. Because <laughs> I'm just going to do the thing that I said. <laughs> you know what? What the hell? Because let's do shields. Because if you just did pumpkin, then I was just going to say shields. We brought pumpkin shields or we brought pumpkins so as shields. <laughs> like, uh, I was sold. That was going to happen. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, this is great. So we have... And we then we have the chorus. Take, which we I would like to change the last line instead of now it's time to remember. Now we are reflecting on our triumph, right? So we need to like change that last line. You know, if if again, if it's it's not too late to imply that it could have still been disastrous if we want to <laughs> say now it's time to surrender. That could Ooh. be positive or negative. That's like that could imply anything. I, okay. You're right. It is very open. Um, cause it could either be like obviously surrender or like surrender to our love and be together. Right. Right. Um, I'm, I, I'm okay with surrender. Okay. I like that. Sir. Oh, I spelled it right. Surrender. Uh, no, I didn't. Okay. two R's. There we go. Um. There we go. We've got a song. <laughs> we've got, no, of course I'd like to title it. I mean, pumpkin me, pumpkin you, right? Um, should we call it Pumpkin Us? Or should we go, should we lean into the shield thing and say, like, Pumpkin Arms? Here's the thing, you're writing a song. You're getting a little too poem here. I know, well, poem is what I do. (laughs) I I know, I know. I'm thinking, the hook of the song, this is where I come in, right? Okay, The hook of this song is more than likely going to be the pumpkin me pumpkin you line because it's just such a off like a weird line. Sure. So I really feel like that's kind of where that's going to grab people. 
Like pumpkin me, pumpkin you. It's one of those things where if you title it something different, people are still going to call it pumpkin me, pumpkin you. What if My... so we call it pumpkin me, pumpkin you? But this is one of those weird songs where it's like in parentheses. <laughs> pumpkin us. <laughs> pumpkins, pump, pumpkins at arms. <laughs> Okay, I'm fine with that. Pumpkins at arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to do my best to just improv this. I don't even have an idea of what it's going to be yet, but I'm just going to go for it. But I you need you to tell it. me, Weston. I need you to tell me. It's tradition. I have to. Is this is this fast or is it slow? Just give me that at least. Or give me a so move. So here's the, here's the thing. Me, Earl, and the girl was a slow one, remember? Yeah. I think, right? So this one. You're slower, yeah. Should this one be sped up, and would that even make sense? Do you have an idea of how this would be speedier, or should it let's be make, along the same lines as me, Earl, and the girl? Let's make it a little more up-tempo and see what happens. I'm just going to go for it. So it's going right. to change drastically throughout this time, but we'll give it a shot. Here we go. Um, <laughs> pumpkin me, pumpkin you. <laughs> Gorge brought us... Uh, I don't know. That could work, though. <laughs> Pumpkin me, pumpkin you, gourds brought us together, but love wasn't always true, and now it's time to remember, it was a dreamy after, this is, no, we're gonna talk it, it was a dreamy afternoon, you were sitting across the room, and I was holding a big spoon, and there was a pumpkin waiting to bloom, pumpkin, well, pumpkin me, pumpkin you, Gorge brought us together, but love wasn't always true, and now it's time to remember. Autumn came in like a parade of knives, spilled across the dark horizon over fields. <laughs> I dropped her squash, and yet it survives. We reaped and sowed and brought pumpkins as shields. Pumpkin me, pumpkin you, gorge brought us together, but love wasn't always true, and now it's time to surrender, surrender. Surrender. It like echoes out. What a weird energy that brings when you try to do it up tempo. <laughs> I know. Like the whole time, I think we wrote this with a slow tempo in mind, and then just <laughs> just said well, up tempo. It, Why not? It adds to the improv. The whole time, people are listening are to listeners to the song. <laughs> it's just going to be a confused look on their face. The absolute like vocal whiplash of having to do what you did for the chorus and then talk the verses. <laughs> the absolute whiplash. <laughs> Autumn came in like a parade of knives. I don't know. I got. I. I don't know. I. I'm. I'm kind of into it. It really. It's. It's a head scratcher. It, it really, honestly, it is. And I think more <laughs> ways than one. That was pumpkin me, pumpkin you, pumpkins at arms. <laughs> Oh, I love these. This was great. I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with this. I, I'm happy with all of our songs. They're all going to be um eventually available on uh for those of you that want the lyrics written out, they'll be available over on Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Patreon.com forward slash profoundish. That way you can take these lyrics and then you can print them out and put them on your, your binder if you go to you school. Can go, yeah, you can go caroling to these songs next year like ne- next Christmas. <laughs> Could you imagine like a like a profoundish concert and it's like, oh, I hope they play me Earl and the Girl. <laughs> People just in the audience <laughs> just chattering. Between the two that we've made so far, I feel like me Earl and the Girl is still I think that's still our bread and butter. I think that might be our stronger one. But you know, I don't know. Maybe yeah. the people will have a different favorite. We'll see. We we we'll have to wait and see. But I kind of feel the same. I I uh I like the idea of me Earl and the Girl, that's the A side, that's the single. And then we got the B side, and that's Pumpkin Me and Pumpkin You. <laughs> Pumpkins at Arms. Well, I love it all the same. Uh, we ran a little long in the tooth this episode, but all the same, where can we find you, Alex? You can find me at alexduquette.net. I make music. I make medleys. Um, I also make video game soundtrack retrospectives. You can find the links to all those things there if you're into any of that. If you like hearing me talk about music, definitely check out the, the retrospectives. That's called VGM Quest, but you can find it directly on the website. What about you? Mo or Mo. Uh, I've got a website. Weston. Uh, whatever. I Weston, Mo. I'm all the same person. You, I've got a website, WestonHasty.com. That's my landing page for all of the things that I do. If you're into gaming content, you want to come watch a Let's Play or a stream or something, Magic Man Mo over on YouTube. Um, and I've got other bro- uh, projects coming along the way. Just check out the website. Come say hi to me on Twitter at WestonHasty. 
Thank you all so much for listening to Profoundish. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you uh, like, subscribe, five star or favorite, share with your friends. Uh, but whatever you want, whatever you do, thank you so much for listening. And until next time. All, all right. right.